The southeastern U.S. is a hotspot of water snake biodiversity with around a dozen snakes in the Nerodia genus calling this part of the country their home. Now all Nerodia are similar in that they are associated with aquatic systems and that they are all large bodied snakes with highly keeled scales, which makes them pretty distinctive compared to most other colubrids. Today we are exploring the freshwater ecosystems of central Florida, searching for the three species of water snake which can be found here. Since many of these species are at least partially nocturnal, my first tactic for finding them is road cruising. And in particular, we are targeting the largest water snake in North America, the Florida green water snake. All right, you guys, we have a real treat here. This is actually a species of snake that I haven't seen in several years and is really exciting for me. This right here is Nerodia taxis plata. Oh, it's okay, baby. This is the brown water snake. There, there, it's all right. Now, this is a very, very small brown water snake. This is actually one of the largest species of true water snakes in North America, only behind the Florida green water snake and the diamondback water snake in maximum adult size. So I would say that this is probably a yearling right here. Now, brown water snakes are really cool because these are actually fish specialists. So of course, lots of water snakes will prey on fish, but brown water snakes specialize in preying on fish. And the adults in particular seem to have a great fondness for different species of catfish, which I think is really, really interesting and sets them apart from other Nerodia in terms of their ecological niche. But I think it's a really cool example of niche partitioning. Now, the brown water snake is very frequently confused for the venomous cottonmouth or water moccasin. Brown water snakes have a very defined dorsal pattern and you can see it has these really nice um, kind of squares or rectangles on the ventral side and on the dorsal side and cotton males will never have any pattern like that. So this little guy still has lots more growing to do and we'll get him right off this road where he'll be safe. Right, bye little buddy, stay off the road now. As amazing as that brown water snake encounter was, road cruising was not producing much of anything. So I decided to switch up tactics, heading right out into the heart of a freshwater wetland system, hoping to find some water snakes either basking in the sun or actively foraging for food. And as it turns out, this change of strategy really paid off. Okay, yeah, that's definitely a snake, but it looks too thin to be a water snake. What is it? What? Oh my gosh, it's just a beautiful, oh, Florida water snake. Hey, beautiful, it's okay. I'm not gonna hurt you. Oh, awesome. What a nice little Nerodia. Oh, wow, look at this one's belly. Hold on, can you guys see that? That's beautiful. Banded waters are known to venture far away from water. And because you can find these in so many different areas, these, of course, are commonly confused for venomous cottonmouth snakes, but have a very different pattern. So obviously their common name, the banded water snake, does come from their patterning, where we have bands that are typically smallest at the bottom and then thick at the dorsum, whereas a cottonmouth has the reverse of that. Now, Florida water snakes are known to take a wide variety of prey items as well. And because this species is known to be able to travel over land and very effectively frogs can make up a huge part of their diet in many areas as frogs are also traveling over land on wet and rainy nights. But of course they'll also eat fish and anything else really that they can catch. These are active foragers so they're really using those huge eyes you can see they're very visual as well as their excellent sense of smell to track down prey. Now this is not the species of water snake that I was searching for tonight so we will get this beautiful snake right back in the wild and keep looking and hopefully find our target species of the Florida green water snake. But what a beautiful and really calm Nerodia to be able to work with. All right, bye little friend. Thanks for letting me film you. Hey, we got one. Wow. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh my gosh. I can't believe it, it's so calm. This right here is the Florida green water snake. And this is actually the largest water snake in North America. Now, obviously this individual is not that much larger than the other water snakes that we've seen on this trip, but still you can see it's a very stout bodied, relatively heavily built snake compared to most other colubrids. And besides their amazing size, up to 74 inches, there's lots of other things that make our Florida green water snakes so unique. For one thing, these are considered a wetland specialist species. So Florida green water snakes are pretty much entirely dependent on wetland systems, as opposed to let's say ponds or rivers. And so much of their unique morphology compared to other Nerodia has to do with the kind of prey that is available to them in these wetland systems. 
And so if we look really closely at the head here, we can see that the eyes are actually positioned dorsally. They are on top of the head, and they are much smaller compared to the rest of the body than what we get with more generalistic water snakes, like let's say the northern water snake. And that's because these are specialized for preying, we think, on amphibians primarily, in ephemeral wetlands. I would also say that green water snakes might be the most understudied of all the water snakes in North America. And part of that is because they are only found in Florida with a few disjunct populations in South Carolina and in Georgia. Now, because of their aquatic tendencies and because of their coloration, this species obviously, like so many other Nerodia, is commonly confused with the cottonmouth. And I will admit, it can be tricky with adults because as you can see, there is no very obvious pattern on this individual. You can kind of see though, if we look at the ventral scales, we are getting a little bit of striping on the sides. No really distinct shape to that striping, just some vertical bars. And honestly, that's the best way I can explain the pattern that we typically see with this species. Now, as a testament to how peaceful this animal is, it has not musked and it has not attempted to strike me one time. But when I was doing my research on this species before trying to find them, everything I read told me that they're nasty, they're mean, they'll bite you, they'll musk on you. And you know, that's what I've come to expect with water snakes. But this is a species that has totally broken the mold. And I know you guys can't feel this animal right now, but texturally it is much silkier in feel than other Nerodia. And I guess it's just that these scales are far less keeled. So I think right now, this right here is actually probably my new favorite water snake. We will let it get right back to basking, but I am so thankful that we were finally able to encounter this species that I've been searching for literally all week. This is the last night we could have done it. This is a real treat to be sure. All right, we'll set you back. Wow, a beautiful water snake. If you enjoyed learning more about the water snakes of Florida, I think you'd also like to learn about the northern water snake, which is one of my favorite species that can be found right here in North Carolina. Here's your sneak peek at the species that will be featured in the next episode of The Wild Report. I'll see you next time, but until then, stay curious and keep adventuring everywhere. This is Ben Zeno of The Wild Report, signing out.